Well, we begin here at noon with breaking news out of New York, where an earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 4.7 shook America's largest city this morning. ABC's Derek Dennis has the latest details on the developing story. Millions of residents across parts of the Northeast reported feeling an earthquake Friday morning. You at home, you probably felt it. We just experienced an earthquake here uh, in the tri-state area. We're getting calls into our newsroom from Connecticut, Long Island, New Jersey, and of course, New York City. People feeling the shock. The U.S. Geological Survey confirms a quake was centered about four miles northeast of White House Station, New Jersey. WABC's Nina Pineda reporting live from her home. And I heard this rumbling, so I looked outside because I thought something happened with the, the boiler or they're, they're working on the pool, and I see this. Move, Roxy. Move. And I see the, the, this plant here. The fire department being dispatched in Long Valley, New Jersey, amid reports of multiple structures with damage. It just felt like a light shaking. I actually felt it uh, coming from the building. Uh, my roommate came out saying, oh, did you feel the earthquake? I was like, oh, yeah, it's just somebody doing laundry upstairs. I was sleeping in my bed, and the next thing I know, I just woke up and I feel my bed shaking. I was laying down, and my desk started shaking. I was like, this ain't normal. New York's Governor Kathy Hochul saying, my team is assessing impacts and any damage that may have occurred, and we will update the public throughout the day. Several airports, including BWI in Baltimore, Newark International Airport, and JFK are all on ground stop to check runways for damage from this quake. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. And reaction to this morning's earthquake is already pouring in. Former U of L head basketball coach Rick Matino, who's now at St. John's University in New York City, posted this on social media this morning saying he felt the earthquake while on a Zoom call with the recruit, even saying maybe the earthquake is a sign that that recruit is a musket for their program. Well, we are just three days away from the great American eclipse. Cities in the path of totality are making their final watch party preparations. ABC's Lionel Moyes shows us how they're preparing to welcome those visitors from all over the world. Just three days to go before the historic solar eclipse, and for some, the final preparations have been bumpier than the surface of the moon. Overbooked hotels from upstate New York to the deep south are suddenly canceling some guests' reservations, leaving them with no place to stay. For others, the options are pricey. A Super 8 hotel in Illinois, usually $95 a night, will be nearly $950 Sunday night. Speaking of somewhere to go, portable toilet companies are flush with business. Some reporting a tenfold increase in revenue ahead of so many big gatherings. It's just really hard to manage that many people. With excitement sky high, people in the path of totality are getting creative. This New York high schooler turned a cereal box into a tool to safely watch the eclipse as it happens. Looking at it like with the glasses is pretty cool, but it's like dimmed. But you can see the whole thing with the, with the box. But before you start carving up cardboard, keep an eye on the forecast. Overcast skies could dampen the experience for millions. Clouds are going to be an issue. Places like Waco and Tyler and even Dallas. And the overall flow is not a really a dry one. So cities up the line like Indianapolis, Cleveland and Buffalo, hopefully just some thin clouds. But I think that area is going to be touch and go day of. What looks best for clear viewing right now is in northern New England. We aren't the only ones going wild for the eclipse. Biologists will carefully observe animals after seeing some strange behavior during the 2017 eclipse. When the moon covered the sun, giraffes started running around their enclosures. Flamingos made a protective circle around their young. And as for some tortoises, they started mating behavior. This biologist tells our Danny New he's watching the eclipse with 40 other scientists at the Fort Worth Zoo, and he's encouraging children children everywhere to document any strange animal behavior they see. Maybe now this is enough to spark the interest of a, of a kid or a teenager to think, yeah, maybe science is something I could get into. And consider wearing red and green during the eclipse. Those colors, especially if you're in a group, will create a unique effect. That's because of how we see colors in low light. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. Even though the sun will only be about 98% covered in Louisville, there are still some local parks that are hosting watch parties. The overlook at Iroquois Park, which is beautiful, will be open for its total eclipse of the park event. It's from 1 to 4 on Eclipse Day with live music and a food truck. You can also take in the eclipse from the Big Four Lawn at Waterfront Park or Eclipse and Eats 
at the Common Green in Clarksville, Indiana. Although this part of Kentuckiana isn't in the path of totality, organizers say they wanted to provide a safe space for everybody to enjoy the cosmic event. We may only be in 99% totality, but we're definitely ready to have 100% of the fun. So our mission just pretty much is just uh, we want to bring individuals together, whether it's in a park, and just provide a safe atmosphere for people to enjoy stuff. So this may not be a park, but it, can, uh, it definitely is a space that we're excited to provide opportunities. And of course, we've got you covered on Eclipse details. Just text the word Eclipse to the number that's on your screen, 502-582-7290. Our live eclipse special starts at 2 p.m. Monday. You can watch it all unfold on WHS 11 and all of our digital platforms, including our website, news app, and YouTube channel. We'll also stream it live on WHS 11 Plus, which is available on Roku, Fire, and Apple TV. Well, this morning, the National Weather Service confirmed they did find an EF2 tornado damage in Buckner in Oldham County, and that means winds up to 115 miles per hour. This is video from our Sky 11 drone in Buckner, and you can see many down power lines, houses with large chunks of roof torn right off and other debris scattered everywhere. Now we expect to learn a lot more today about the tornadoes that left a path of destruction across Kentucky on a Tuesday. The National Weather Service will try to determine if the Jeffersonville tornado, which crossed the Ohio River into Prospect, was the same tornado impacting Henry County. Now already we know the tornado that crossed the Eastern Bridge and hit this riverfront neighborhood in Prospect, Beachland Beach, was more powerful than initially thought. The NWS has upgraded it to an EF2 with winds of up to 120 miles per hour. They said it actually grew in strength as it crossed the Ohio River. A homeowner in the Beachland Beach area told us he took cover in his basement right before a large oak tree crashed right into his home. I was sitting right next to that end table. That's what I was sitting at. Ten seconds later, I was three steps down in the basement and that tree fell. Open up the, the basement window, tear it out in order to get me out of the, uh, the basement. And uh, I had no way to get out of there other than that. Wow, that's scary. John Gordon with the NWS says his crews will start their work today in Henry County. And homeowners trying to rebuild are being flooded with calls from prospective prospective contractors, but public officials are warning of scammers. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen and photojournalist Aspen Hester talked to one local contractor with a A plus rating from the Better Business Bureau who has some advice on what to avoid when scams are happening. I feel like a lot of bad, bad actors in the industry, they'll use the urgency to make you sign different contracts, whether you want to use them or not you're locked in with this contractor. Ryan Jackson with Louisville Roofing says those bad actors make up a small portion of his industry, maybe 10 to 15 percent. It's very angry and frustrated, honestly. That's what I was like I told you before, I swore to myself I would never do that. The issue is a personal one for Jackson. After his experience in the aftermath of the 2012 Henryville tornado. The power lines on the road, fire trucks everywhere, grapefruit size hail in the road and people are already knocking on doors and, and dropping door hangers. Now working in one of the hardest hit neighborhoods in Buckner, he's noticed an uptick in opportunistic service. And while working on this project, we've seen wrap trucks, you know, full logos drive by and then we don't know, like roofing companies we're unaware of, which is pretty rare for us. Come to Jeffersonville right now, you will see a lot of these. The mayor says it's to keep the wrong people out. I want to protect people from a lot of the contractors that show up all of a sudden from out of state. Moore says contractors from Ohio, West Virginia, and Tennessee have all flocked to his city looking for work. If they're asking for money down, I'd be very wary. Back in Buckner, Jackson says don't trust contractors who are willing to forgive your insurance deductible. And say that Kentucky currently is a state felony to forgive it. He also says to check if the contractors have general liability and workers' comp insurance. They expose you to risk by doing, doing your house if they don't have that. Reporting from Jeffersonville, Indiana and Buckner, Kentucky, Connor Steffen, WHAS 11, on your side. LMBD also posted a warning on social media reminding us all to be cautious of scammers. The department recommends you get multiple estimates for work on your home, demand references, and never let contractors pressure you into hiring them.